right away. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, which resort? It's called Terranea in Palo Verdes. I don't know anything about it either. Is that US? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't go to Canada all the time. I, I've been to Toronto like three times, though. I love it. I mean, Canada doesn't even go to Canada. Right. Um, I was also going to make a joke when you first got on and call you uh, Eric Stickle. Mm, Apparently yeah, somebody like, did that. <laughs> yeah, Danny Deals. Don't call me that. The worst, the worst name possible. No, I don't care. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. That's a funny right. callback, though. All right. Right? Well, <laughs> you know, I did my fair share of Googling on you. Yep. Okay. All right. Holy cow. I can't believe I'm actually talking with a broke agent. And do you know how hard it is to get your freaking real name? <laughs> that took a lot of Google searching. I was like, broke agent and just pages of data came up and and not your real name. So I am so happy to have you on, Eric, and to learn a little bit more of how the heck the broke agent came to be and uh, listen to what you have to share. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've worked very hard to hide my identity like Batman for years. So I'm glad that it's still <laughs> difficult for you to, to find it. <laughs> it is still difficult, but I am over the age of 25. So I'm sure anyone mm. under the age of 30 would be able to like pull it up very quickly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also right, on, right on the website too. Like right on the cool. website. There you yeah. go. Or slide into your DMs, which apparently Matt Lee and Eddie did, which is how you exactly. became BFFs. That's right. That is right. <laughs> um, so I mean, I was listening to some other podcasts and, and uh it's a really funny story how the broke agent came to be. Do you mind sharing a little bit? Yeah, it, it came to be very naturally. I was a buyer's agent in 2014. Before that, I was a marketing assistant for a top agent here in Los Angeles. And before that, I was the receptionist at a brokerage called Hilton and Highland in Beverly Hills, where I was answering the phone as the receptionist. I was doing the mail. I was kind of doing little assistant work on the side for other agents. And that's kind of when I realized that I should get my real estate license. There was a lot of action it was an entertaining charismatic group of people mm -hmm. and i was like i like being around this office i think maybe this this could be a potential career though i had zero desire to be in real estate i like sports and writing so there i was like this go. is not at all what i want to be let me just yeah. be a temporary receptionist for a little bit make some money and then figure it out yeah. um and then as a buyer's agent i was just doing going through the motions of what you should do when you start your real estate career. I joined a team. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. This isn't what you should do. This is what I thought you should do. I joined a team. Okay, I was like, can you clarify this? <laughs> exactly. No, no, don't. Do not take my advice on any of this. I joined a successful team and mm -hmm. their their whole pitch was, I'll, I'll get, you know, 30% of whatever buyer I bring in, 40% uh, of, no, 30% of whatever listing I brought in, 40% of whatever buyer I brought in. But I would get to sit all these incredible open houses where there'd be a ton of traffic. Of course, they sicked me on these dead open houses every Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Fridays. Actually, not Fridays. I just made that up. But every Tuesday, <laughs> every Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday, I would sit these open houses. And these were all the the opens. Again, this is back in 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. So this is not when the average days on market was what, like 28, 29, like it is now. Mm -hmm. This is when some listings, especially luxury listings, would sit for months, four months, five months out of a time. So people but weren't it, banging down the door to get in your open house. No, I would, I would sit open houses. So, you know, setting up signs, sitting there for three hours, putting, getting the signs back. And these are big 3,000 to 5,000 to 8,000 square foot, you know, really nice houses that take yeah. a long time to pack up, turn on all the lights, open up everything. I would sometimes sit these houses and get, one or zero people so <laughs> you're like wow sucked. what have i done with my life i went exactly. to college and here i am sitting in an empty house by myself and shocker you don't make any money when you're just <laughs> sitting there so <laughs> you don't say i think a lot of people don't know that though like no. i actually don't think people understand that you're not getting paid <laughs> no unless you're a redfin agent which you could get paid by the hour which i did consider because i was like oh wait you get paid to just go show these properties i'm showing these properties and seeing these open houses and making no money that sounds incredible actually mm -hmm. um so i was doing all that and then obviously i had a ton of downtime during these open houses <laughs> i'm sorry and at the i same shouldn't time, laugh at that but no it's okay and then <laughs> I was cold calling and I was doing door knocking and we and how was that? Besides terrible. It, it was as bad as you could think 
it could ever go. Basically, I have <laughs> no, and it's my fault. I had no confidence on the phones. I was not. But you were well, young, for, right? Like you were pretty young. Yeah, I was young. But if I would have prepared more for those actual calls and would have researched mm -hmm. the properties more and you know, drove the neighborhoods more before I dropped off these packages, praying that people wouldn't answer the door or the phone because I knew that the conversation <laughs> was going to be so awkward that I would never even be able to close the deal. So I'm just doing a bunch of things that I knew were never going to work. And that's yeah. when my friend and I started the broke agent. And um, yeah, we were basically tweeting out the inner monologue of a struggling real estate agent on Twitter, screenshotting those and posting those to Facebook and Instagram and kind of just building a brand of a struggling real estate agent because everybody at that time in social media mm -hmm. was posting nonstop about success. It was all these incredible real estate agents with the suits and the Josh Altman's and mm -hmm. million dollar listing was getting popular and it was motivational quotes and grind culture and all this stuff. And I figured, well, there's got to be other people like me. Turns out 87% of I was gonna say, uh, yeah. <laughs> is our broke agents, which is perfect. So I basically was just you know, tweeting out the anxieties that I had mm -hmm. at these open houses, at these inspections, at these um, you know, phone calls, appointments, everything. And it picked up traction and now it is a media company. Yeah. So I want to get into more of that first, but I uh, heard something about, you were cracking jokes at the office as well, right? Like, what don't you have one about falling out of escrow? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not going to retell that one since you already <laughs> blew the punchline, but yeah, the joke was I would <laughs> limp around the office and people would yes. say what happened. And I would say I fell out of escrow, a real, a real knee slapper, <laughs> one of my worst jokes ever, but I mean, yeah, I, I was... found it funny, but like I'm a hundred years old. So <laughs> well, good, good. I'm glad you found it yeah. funny, but yeah, I was telling, I wasn't like walking around telling real estate jokes, like a clown stand up <laughs> comedian, but you know, I was developing the relationship with all mm -hmm. these agents and just making jokes conversationally as, as I do. So it, it comes so naturally to you as well. And I'm sure like, you, um, you know, you learn through osmosis and your experience at the comedy club, probably helped build or did you always were you always a funny guy growing up were you the guy at the party telling the jokes making people feel comfortable or yeah I was that, that was always a part of my personality I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say definitely starting in high school throughout college uh the laugh factory I was never performing comedy I was a marketing, marketing assistant guy, there yeah. so I, I was posting to their social media mm -hmm. so I was trying to get people to attend six shows at the laugh factory comedy club and obviously I saw a bunch of stand-up was a huge fan of stand-up mm -hmm. and just naturally I'm always trying to make people laugh. So it just made sense for real estate because there wasn't really anything else during Similar. that time besides lighter yeah. side of real estate, which isn't funny. That was posting stuff to be funny, you know? And I was like, mm -hmm. this is, this is a, like an untapped audience here. And real estate is the perfect vessel for comedy because yeah. there's just so much hilarious <laughs> shit that goes on on a daily basis. There's so yeah. much pain that happens to an agent <laughs> on a daily basis that all these pain points can be turned into a joke or some relatable tweet. Well, and like, I feel like as an agent myself, you have to laugh at some of this shit because otherwise you're going to go crazy. Yeah. I've even sent uh, my husband some of the memes from the broke agent and he's not in real estate whatsoever. And like, I know if he's opened up Instagram and he's seen like one of the many memes or whatever I send him because I can hear him laughing and, I, and he has no clue. Like he actually has no idea what it's like in the the daily like life of a realtor, but he also finds it funny as like a good yeah. So like, it's relatable for everyone because, you, yeah, you, you know, Sally in the office is doing something silly. As well. Yeah. It's office humor. It's sales mm -hmm. humor. It's commission only humor. It's anyone that's ever bought or sold a house, which is everybody at some point in their, their life. Everybody's dealt with a yeah. real estate agent. So I think the humor definitely cross pollinates uh, amongst other industries, but you know, it's really focused on agent to agent humor. Yeah. <laughs> Your puppy. Yeah. Um, so how did you go from starting this kind of comedic account as an outlet of being like, holy shit, what am I doing to growing a media company? Yeah, this all happened naturally too. So I I always knew that this was going to be what I wanted to do with my life. Once I started the broke agent, I was like, I have mm -hmm. so much more fun doing this and I'm good at it. But yeah. I had no means or no idea how to monetize anything like this. I had no idea what the next step was because I knew there was yeah. value in humor. But at the same time, I knew that just humor was not going to be the way that I, you know, have a career in real estate, basically. Like I'm not yeah. going to become a real estate comedian. That is one of the lamest <laughs> forms of life that you could possibly become unless there's yeah. real estate comedians out there that are actually crushing it. I have no idea. 
I well, I mean, the fact that we don't know is correct. Probably, you know, if I haven't seen any, then mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think they're out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't remember what I was saying. What was I talking about? It's a natural evolution. Natural evolution. Yes. So I was posting this for five, six years, just growing the brand, kind of knowing mm -hmm. that at some point I was going to come up with something. Mm -hmm. You just was... trust that like, this is going to happen. I, I, I know if I just stay consistent. And I was still doing real estate. I was writing for a cryptocurrency blog. I was writing sports blogs. I was doing social media consulting. And then basically the switch flipped kind of 2019 when I came out with an ebook, which is an, an Instagram growth ebook, where I realized that I really knew what I was doing when it came to getting Instagram enga engagement, mm -hmm. um, how to you know trend hack, how to get followers, how to interact with people online, how to basically gain and maintain attention. And I really knew how to do it from a real estate agent perspective and how to articulate that message to real estate agents. So I came out with this ebook basically to build my database, to build my email list. And it got like a couple thousand downloads. And I was like, oh, okay. Like there's All something right. here. Yeah. Like humor could be kind of, you know, the hook into the knowledge that I actually can provide. So I started doing more blogs about social media and how agents can grow on Instagram and kind of mm -hmm. highlighting different agents that were starting to do comedic stuff like a Matt Leonetti or a mm -hmm. Derek Gregory or this guy named Dick Slider is his this is his Instagram name in Australia. Okay. Sorry for there the, you go. <laughs> yes, it's his name, not mine. <laughs> Missed uh, opportunity, we'll call yes. it. Yes, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and I was starting to highlight all these kind of funny agents that were popping up in mm -hmm. 2019, 2020. That's when Matt Leonetti reached out to me and I highlighted him in my Instagram story. And then we became friends. And then I started something called the BNN, which was the Broke News Network, which is kind of like the first arm of a real estate media company where I would go to my friend Ben Fisher's house. He was an agent in Long Beach. And we'd just film an eight to 10 minute episode in his garage and talk about the real estate market, Instagram strategy, the real estate news, and kind of make it like the weekend update SNL style of what's mm -hmm. going on in real estate. We did that to Instagram TV, which was probably not, remember IGTV? I do, but I, I didn't really pay any, any attention to it. It was just like at that point, I just felt uh, it was too much. I couldn't learn one more thing. Yeah, no one paid attention to it. And <laughs> the show did well, but then we started, you know, that's right when Instagram Reels came up. So we started cutting right. all these down. But this was a very time consuming, expensive process because we were paying a video editor. We didn't have sponsors, but it was kind of like my first front facing mm -hmm. content. During all this, I'm doing constant ebooks, growing my email list. I partnered with Coffee and Contracts, who we're an mm -hmm. affiliate with, where they have an entire template platform for marketing and posts and social content for real estate agents. So I was creating content for them. So I finally started making a little bit of money to the point where I could stop doing real estate and just focus on this. And then uh, Matt and I started the Over Ask podcast. There's no overhead. I could film it right here. Mm -hmm. We started interviewing the best real estate experts. and Your agents. first guest right out of the gate were like freaking bananas, like Ryan Serhant. Uh, Sirhan and uh, Jordan Cohen. Yeah, the number yeah. one Max agent. The, the goal oh, with the podcast, crazy. start big. Because mm -hmm. once you have that huge guest, you can leverage that guest. Mm -hmm. be like, oh, I had on uh, Ryan Serhant. You want to come mm -hmm. on my podcast? And it's like, oh, well, if you talk to this guy, then you must be huge. You're, you're legit. Exactly. <laughs> Too legit um, to quit. <laughs> exactly. So the, the podcast got a lot of traction. And it was really fun because we were just learning so much from all these agents. We were learning mm -hmm. YouTube from Jeremy Knight and social from Taya DiCarlo and TikTok mm -hmm. from Glenda Baker and all these kind of real estate personalities that were really blowing up during kind of the golden era of content creation, 2020, mm -hmm. 2021. It's the pandemic. Everybody's listening to and consuming this content. Then Byron Lazine, who's my partner in BAM. Um, we were talking about doing some sort of funny real estate course, kind of real estate for dummies, you know, how to not fail <laughs> your first five years in real estate. Matt well, five years is generous. Like I think like one. <laughs> exactly. One how to not fail in your first year. Um, so we cr created this course and we never promoted it because we we're like ah, coming out with a course just like right off the bat. That just seems so cliche, mm -hmm. but we were like, let's wrap a media company. Like, let's create mm. products. Let's create a media company. We're looking at what Inman News is doing and kind of all these legacy media companies and realizing that they haven't evolved to mm -hmm. how people are consuming content today. They're not doing podcasts. They're not doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's no social clips. It's headlines and then it's blogs behind a paywall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Inman's a, a great media company, but I just, I felt like the, the space needed disrupting, as they always say. 
And mm-hmm. I was like, how do I want to consume content? I want to consume content from personalities that I respect and that I find entertaining. I'm going to consume mm-hmm. content social first. I don't want to have to type in a blog. I want to be able to just see the clip. I want yes. the information thrown into my face. And mm-hmm. then I want to have the blog and the email and everything as well. So Byron and I started now BAM.com, which is BAM Media, formerly Broke Agent Media. And now we have like seven podcasts, four blogs a day, a staff of 12, a uh, course and training platform. Mm-hmm. And it's a full-blown media company with events and everything. BAM well, camp. it's, it's, I was just going to say, I was going to talk about BAM Camp. So how I even got the audacity to even like slide into your DMs, like I guess Matt did. Um, I was on one of your trainings a few weeks ago or a month ago, maybe with Emma Pace. Oh yeah. Yeah. She's great. Emma and Tom story. I freaking loved her. It was like a Mm -hmm. five day, maybe like it was an hour each day. The five day challenge. Yes. I did the challenge. Yeah. I got some gold from that, by the way. I've been been sharing that with some of the, the ladies in my ecosystem, but, um, Emma is freaking hilarious. Mm-hmm. I was just like, you seem like a fun person to have a beer with. And mm-hmm. then you had mentioned something about podcasts. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and, uh, but you guys also talked about BAM camp. So let's talk about BAM camp. It's coming up in April. Is that April? No. So we have one in June, June 6th June. in Washington, okay. DC. We haven't even released it to the public yet, just to our yes. BAM X members. So become okay. a member of BAM X and then you can mm-hmm. get a 25% discount to BAM camp. But yes. we threw our first one back in Was it August? No, it was September of 2023 in Naples, Florida. That's where the shirt came from. We had a hundred people there. We had incredible speakers. It was a real fun, intimate event with a happy Mm -hmm. hour after just nonstop value, no fluff, Mm -hmm. incredible presentations on YouTube and AI. And um, we had the Knowledge Brokers podcast live with Tom Tool, Lisa Chinati and Byron. We had myself, Haley Ingram there, Coffee and Contracts, Mm Leonetti opened. We had Tate at Carlo uh, keynote it. Um, it was That's great. Cool. It was it was it was really fun to actually throw an event where people walked away being like, "I Holy got so much value out of that." Like there was only a hundred yeah. people. This feels like the beginning of mm-hmm. a new wave of real estate events where it's not the same Inman conference or whatever conference over and over and mm-hmm. over again. I love it. I um, I would also say that that challenge week I got a lot out of that, and yeah. I, for some reason I thought Bam Camp was online, but it's in real life. BAM Camp is in real life. There, wow. We do a lot of online free challenges mm-hmm. and it's a great brand builder. It's a great email yeah. builder. That's why we do so many webinars mm-hmm. is because we want to show people like, you know, like us, know us, mm-hmm. trust us. This is fun. Like you're going to get so much yeah. information. Come to our events later on, join our email list, join BAM X. Like it mm-hmm. is by far the best, like most easiest way to get someone's email. And they're fun to do. And we like giving out that information. Yeah. But, it, it's like, cool. We, we want to own the digital event space in real estate. And we just mm-hmm. we just did an event called the BAM Pro Bowl where we had a national anthem. We had Sir Hans <laughs> speak at that. And we got, yeah. here's an exclusive for you, BAM Cella, the Coachella of real estate All digital right. events coming up in April. Well, hot damn. There you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys, and I'm saying you guys, like collectively, you and your partner, have really been able to look at really creative and effective strategies like where do you come up with this stuff? Like, does it just, are you one of those people who go to bed and then you have a dream and you wake up, you're like, this is what we're doing. We're bringing a hundred people together. We're going to have happy hour. It's going to be awesome. Like it seems like you're kind of on the cutting edge and pushing boundaries. And um, yeah, like where does the inspiration come from? Well, thank you. Um, it, it, I wish it came to me in dreams where I just woke up <laughs> and had these ideas, but that's definitely not the case. We have a great team around us of talented creators and writers mm-hmm. and our staff who are all very creative, smart people who are on the cutting edge in the sense that they're consuming so much content from other Mm -hmm. media companies and from other industries that these aren't all original ideas. Like throwing digital Mm -hmm. event is not our idea. Yeah. But But you're doing it it better. Calling it damn pro bowl and then adding Mm -hmm. in our humor and our entertainment factor. That's the, the, that's the hook. That is Mm -hmm. the differentiating factor between us and other media companies and other events is mm-hmm. oh i'm gonna go there like i know matt leonetti because he's funny and he's gonna make me laugh like you know how much more valuable that is when you walk <laughs> away or when you're listening to a yeah. podcast and you're laughing and getting the information it's like you know driver's ed you could either take the one where it's boring or you can yeah. take the one that's funny right yeah. and the one that's funny has like mm-hmm. a 90 percent retention or success rate compared mm-hmm. to the other one because you're just bored out of your tears reading you know content behind some paywall or something mm-hmm. so and there's a space for both, certainly. Right. Like, you know, there's some 
dinosaurs are, are folks who are, you know, more in line with that um, older way of consuming and learning. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would agree. I, I would rather laugh and take notes and retain a couple nuggets or at least be like, oh, I'm going to follow this person I never heard of. Like, I didn't know who Emma was mm -hmm. until that challenge. I'm like, whoa, cool. And now I follow her on Instagram. You know, it's this continuum of stalking, I guess. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, I'll call Emma after this and, and warn her as to what's going on. But uh, yeah, we're bringing all these people into our ecosystem, all these content creators and entertainers and really good agents too. I think that's mm -hmm. also what differentiates us is we're not just yapping out of our ass here. Like I know what I'm doing when it comes from real estate marketing or, mm -hmm. you know, talking yeah. to agents about marketing because I'm in it every day, right? I'm posting yeah. constantly. I'm posting yeah. to multiple accounts. I know how the algorithm works. I know how to get emails. I know how to you know, set up events. I know how to set up lead pages and magnets and all these things because I'm in the trenches of it. Byron runs the number one team in Connecticut, Tom Tool, number one team in Philadelphia, Lisa yeah. in Boston. So we have all these people that are doing it. That's why all mm -hmm. this content comes so naturally is we're actually doing it. We're not just, you know, preaching. About yeah. It. Those who can't do teach type thing. You're that's what I'm doing. That. That's why I can't do it. So I'm teaching you. <laughs> but I'm not hilarious. teaching very, very uh I uh, need to be clear. I'm never teaching people how to sell real estate because that's not no. what I was good at. I'm teaching like, that's people not my gym. Yeah. how to build a brand. It's cool. So you just, and even if anybody goes to the band website, if you look at all your contributors and the folks involved, you've successfully built a crew of like kick ass folks in all different sort of disciplines within the real estate industry. Like how the heck were you able to do that? Like how did you pull that up or did it just come organically as well? That definitely came organically, but we've been very particular about who we want to work with. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've built these relationships and Byron's built these relationships with all of these agents because of all the conferences we've attended. So, mm -hmm. you know, I met a lot of people at these Tom Ferry conferences or at an Inman conference or wherever. I develop relationships with them. I see the sort of content they're posting. I know how many sales they're doing. And I, mm -hmm. we kind of like not pick and choose, but we want to partner with people who know what they're talking about. Like we want 100%. to partner with people. Like if I go to a conference and I see Chris Benjamin speak, who's an incredible real estate agent here in Southern California. And I look at his content and it's incredible. And then, you know, we do a skit together or something or I yeah. like, and I'm like, this guy, we got to have this guy a part of BAM. Like he's so motivational. He has such a different way of, of creating content. He's so creative. And we basically say like, you know, Hey, we're, we'll help you build your profile with our mm -hmm. platform. And hopefully you get more followers or you get more attention. Like, you know, you got introduced to Emma Pace through us mm -hmm. and in turn, we're getting content and mm -hmm. it's kind of like just building up the real estate community together, which is awesome. Like we've, we're all about collaborating as much as possible with all these people. There's no, you know, I mean, there's competition with other real estate media of companies. Course. Of course, I want to crush yeah. all of them and destroy them, but I want, <laughs> I, I want like all the agents, like yeah. I want to build up all these agents. But I think that that uh, creating of the community is what's really going to set BAM apart from all of the other real estate uh, media companies is because like people feel like they're a part of something. Like even when you were talking about BAM camp, I was like, oh my God, I kind of want to go to BAM camp. Where is that? Mm -hmm. You know, like that sounds fun. Um, so I think that's a huge differentiating factor. Um, so what happened today? Like when social media is not, our friend some days like today it was offline were you offline I wasn't even sure I was like I don't even know if something goes wrong like can he get a hold of me because Instagram I couldn't even log in for a while I was like oh shit this could be very bad for me yeah well good thing it was in our calendar and our email so I think we were we were good but Old yeah school. so for reference depending on when people are listening to this meta shut down today so Facebook Instagram threads I don't know I, I heard YouTube shut down too temporarily I don't know if there was some I think server. everything but x I okay. saw some really funny Elon Musk uh, yeah, the, tweets, the tweets the or whatever. Yeah, 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 so funny. Yeah, he knows how to take advantage of those situations. He's great at that. He's a good <laughs> trend jacker. Um, <laughs> I mean, wh whenever this happens, and I tweeted this, it, it's, it does make you reflect on your business. And if you're a real estate agent listening, if that's if that's who this audience is, is you know, if social were to shut down tomorrow, if Instagram mm -hmm. were to shut down or your Instagram gets deleted, uh, which happens all the time, right? It gets hacked, yeah. it gets deleted, the algorithm changes. Maybe you were creating one sort of content and then that sort of content stops performing. You do have to look inside of your business and say, is this 
viable still? Can I still thrive if these mm -hmm. platforms were to be removed? That's why we're always preaching building your email list is the most important thing you could do as a brand, as a real estate agent, obviously building your database, the cold calling, the door knocking, like all that stuff is still so, so important. Like mm -hmm. people think we just preach uh, content creation, but this really does open your eyes. Like if you don't have those personal relationships with people and you're just relying on Instagram for someone to shoot you a referral out of nowhere and have it fall out of the sky, you're yeah. going to be screwed. But I totally. would be screwed. By yeah. the way, I would be screwed if Instagram yeah. and Facebook shut down. Um, thankfully, we built an email list and a blog and a YouTube channel, but mm -hmm. it would certainly take out our main promotional arm of BAM. Mm -hmm. So I'm highly aware of that. And that's why we're constantly trying to build on all these platforms, as every agent should try to do, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're mitigating the potential risk of destruction. Destruction. Sounded I love that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I was following, 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 and then you dropped dist destruction. I used yeah. to do risk management for a decade, very corporate -y, very boring. Mm -hmm. um, and I never had destruction in any of my risk matrices, but like looking back, I'm like, missed opportunity. People would have maybe. a great word. Yeah. You know, they maybe mm -hmm. would have paid attention when I was in there. Exactly. <laughs> so that's a kind of a nice segue to talk about like trends that you're seeing, or, you know, you've talked a little bit about the algorithm and how that shifted a little bit, but any other sort of like trends or tips that you would have for, for anyone? I think trend jacking in general, hopping mm -hmm. on pop culture trends when it comes to posting yeah. is the number one great way that I've grown the broke agent account. Anytime there's something happening live in the moment, whether it's a Super Bowl post during the Super Bowl, a meme, or it's, uh, you know, it's the winter for example, and I'm posting about something that's happening that's cold. I know that's such a elementary example, mm -hmm. but my point is like your content yeah. should be viewed in the moment, right? Like if you zoom yes. out, you look at your Instagram feed and it all looks the same and you can't differentiate, was this post done in summer 2022 or winter 2023? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, is it updates about the market? Is it, are they using audios? that are mm -hmm. trending right now? Is it Taylor Swift content? Is it like, you should be able to mm -hmm. look at your content and see, all right, this is something that's that's really happening right now in the moment. That's the sort of content that gives your, uh, your engagement and your brand a tremendous boost. So mm -hmm. look at the calendar before every month and see what's coming up in March. You know, from in, in America, it's March Madness. There's oh, St. Yeah. Patty's Day. There's, you know, spring training. Mm -hmm. I look at everything from like a sports perspective, but there's the Oscars coming up, the Academy Awards. So maybe there's some content you could do around that. Mm -hmm. um, what new restaurants are coming out in your hometown? What new coffee shops? What's going on in your market in the moment? What are inventory levels like? Like mm -hmm. th this is all content that you have to make constantly evolving. Yeah. That was kind of just an all over the place answer, but it's okay. I, I was like following. Do, do, do. It was right. like a bouncing ball, but I got it. Destruction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Destruction. Um, and so that's interesting because coffee and contracts is so helpful with some of that content creation and, and they have a little calendar that you can follow and make it pretty idiot proof. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah, nice. Coffee, you just, yeah. Right. Like follow the fucking contract, the, or the calendar and you can, you're going to be okay. Exactly. And that's why we create, you know, content for coffee and contracts is we try to do timely content. We have these, mm -hmm. you know, meetings every month and her team is fantastic where they meet every month, you know, a couple months in advance saying what's coming up in April, how to oh, create content yeah. around April to make sure that it's timely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some other advice for agents is with like the algorithm engagement is ha having constant variety is extremely important. I always preach this, but yeah. do not get, you know, sucked into posting one sort of content style, even if it's Instagram reels or, mm -hmm. you know, market updates or whatever you're in the groove with, like you want to keep switching it up because people consume content differently and it keeps your brand interesting and entertaining. You're never going to see from me 10 memes in a row. You're going to see a meme. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a text conversation. You're going to see a carousel post. You're going to see a swiper. You're going to see a reaction. Like you mm -hmm. have to have a bunch of different types of content, the way it's formatted and uh, with the topic. Well, it's funny. I had a colleague here earlier and she's going to do a listing video and she's like, Hey, do you have anything witty or like fun I can say? And I was like, listen, I've just been listening to like the broke, broke agent stuff and over ass podcast. I'm like, you know what you should do? 
go big and like make a joke or like do something outrageous. Right. Um, and she's like, what? I was like, I don't know. I've just been consuming so much. That's all I could think about right now. <laughs> do something outrageous. Yeah, that's a <laughs> do, do something very outrageous. simple advice that I'm sure she doesn't want to follow. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, she, if she does, I'll take you in it. Cause I'll be like, look, this is your advice. You don't know right. this, but it was your advice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but is it true that when you first started off, off your account, and content creation, you were trying to be a little bit more like out there and ruffle feathers and like really pushing the envelope and have um, over time maybe just dialed it back just slightly. Are you, are you saying I'm soft now? Well, no. <laughs> I As, didn't say that, but I mean, underlining is there. <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, I, I think I think everybody kind of feels this. Yeah, I'm sure Matt feels this. I'm sure anyone that's kind of grown a brand as your audience grows, your responsibility grows a little bit. And then mm -hmm. the amount of people you could piss off grows for sure. So I know a lot of people think it's really cool and easy to just say, well, just don't give a fuck and post whatever you want and be as edgy as humanly possible. But when you're starting something out, of course, yeah. like you're testing out which joke, mm -hmm. you know, crosses a line, which joke doesn't, what's politically correct, what isn't. So 2015, oh, 2015, by the way, completely different environment. Mm -hmm in terms mm -hmm. of posting social content like yeah you almost can't breathe right now without somebody is, being upset yeah this is you know before instagram stories i even want to mm -hmm. say this is well before instagram reels this is you know just a completely different time when you're still posting almost on people's facebook walls you know so like yes. it, it's not <laughs> so back then of course like when i'm testing out the content i have to mm -hmm. see is this insulting? Yes. Okay. Don't do this. Is this too political? Yes. Okay. Don't do this. Is this yes. move the needle? Okay. Yes. Then keep doing this. So I, we, we're still always trying to be edgy because we do mm -hmm. want to push that line. And obviously like, we don't want to be like, oh, I just want to create content for the followers now, but mm -hmm. of course it's something you have to be aware of. Yeah, like, I'm trying mindful. to appeal. I'm trying to appeal to a large audience of real estate agents. Mm -hmm. If you're a real estate agent, you don't have to take this advice because maybe you mm -hmm. only want to attract the clients that want to work with you. So if you want to be super political or edgy yes, or one side right. in on a specific issue, that's mm -hmm. fine. But for me, I know a lot of, a lot of people have critiqued this too, where it's just like, yeah, like you've gotten soft or something, but <laughs> actually, I don't know if anyone said that. I, know, or... like, uh, I think we're extrapolating here, but that's okay, okay. Maybe. Well, now it's in my head. So now I'm going to be posting <laughs> something completely insane. Perfect. Yeah. Um, is there, has there ever been a piece of content that you've posted or shared that got a reaction that like maybe you weren't expecting? So maybe you thought everybody was going to find it funny or make a lot of people angry or I don't know, sign up for an email, whatever. Was there anything that you were like, oh shit, I did not expect for good or bad. This could be a good or bad. Anything yeah. I mean, a couple of weeks ago. So we're looking at houses. My wife and I are looking for houses right now uh, in Los Angeles. And I went to five open houses a couple Sundays ago. And do people recognize you at these open houses? I'm yeah, just curious. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a, a lot of time they do. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Usually if it's the younger agents, they do. Yeah. Um, if it's not, then they don't. It's not like I'm wearing a broke agent shirt. So <laughs> you <not>. should. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could get a price reduction so they don't think I'll, <laughs> I'll write them up. But four of the five agents were like insane helicopter agents, meaning uh, the second I walked in, they were up my ass. They were mm -hmm. yapping to me about the properties. They were yeah. following my wife and I into every room, like didn't leave our hip. It was extremely uncomfortable and just yeah. an awful way to go about the vibe mm -hmm. of the open house and showing the actual property. Like the desperation was just oozing out of their pores. So yeah. I did an Instagram video, a reel where I was in my car after these and I posted saying like, I am shocked at the amount of helicopter agents still in existence. I just went to five open houses, four of them, you know, describing exactly what I just described to you mm -hmm. in detail. Then I got a bunch of comments saying like, this guy's making up the story, which I thought was funny. The story was not made up at all, but like people were saying that. And then yeah. a bunch of people saying like, damn dude, like you used to be an agent. Like, why are you shitting on all these agents? Or like mm -hmm. now yeah. you think because you have a brand, you could use your platform to basically like discredit a bunch of agents. Yeah. And then I, I watched You're like, again. I didn't say that. I didn't do that. No, Yeah. maybe this is like, I'm, you know, empathetic and I'm. <laughs> I yeah. want to be an advocate for real estate agents, right? I'm mm -hmm. not trying to do anything that makes the industry look bad despite making jokes about the industry for, you know, nine plus years. My goal, <laughs> my goal is to not like, it, it's a yeah. very sensitive time for real estate agents right now in the sense that the, the overall, shifting market, and well, the shifting market, the commission lawsuits, lawsuits yeah. and are like, there's so many yeah. like different factors at play here where the mm -hmm. general tone 
is hatred towards real estate agents. Everyone just thinks that agents are, you know, money grabbing car salesmen that are just trying to pocket as much commission as possible. So yeah. I didn't like there that the reaction was so negative to that video. I got yeah. probably 90% positive comments, mm -hmm. but I also thought about the agents that I posted about. I never mm -hmm. used their names or anything, but I was yeah. like, damn, what if they, you know, remember me coming in and then mm -hmm. see this post and see that I'm just making fun of them immediately. And I started to feel bad about that. So then I yanked Aww. it. Okay. Well, that's, no, I feel bad, I know, I <laughs> but know, I'm right? Canadian. So I feel bad for everything. I was like, Oh I mean, no, I feel, bad for everything too. I feel bad for everything. But I mean, part of what made you so uh, popular in part initially is poking fun at the like really non glamorous parts of real estate. Cause there's a lot that a people, the general population doesn't understand that we do. And B it, it freaking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like there's some parts where you're like, Oh man, this doesn't make me feel very good. So in I hindsight, mean, I wish I did not remove that. By the way, like it was just, yeah. it, I was just a moment of of weakness. weakness. I was on the, I was on the Peloton. I was like in my own head, and I was just like, oh, I don't really want this negativity out there. But uh, I wish I had like a different attitude uh, towards a lot of it. But mm -hmm. there really hasn't been that much that I've, I've pulled down, unless it's mm -hmm. just getting shit engagement. But like. Fair. I've done some kind of political stuff back during the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. And I realized like that is a topic that you don't want to touch. Mm -hmm. and, Especially in America. Well, even Canada. I mean, North yeah. America. We'll say North America. It's like really hot button, very polarizing. Just using even the okay. faces of politicians as memes, even like using a Bernie oh. Sanders reaction shot as a meme. Or doing <laughs> There's some something. really good ones about him, though. Like good oh, memes out there. <laughs> of course. And like, you know, this was, you know, Trump Hillary and... I did something like, cause I, back then I was always trying to figure out other accounts, whether it was bad real estate yeah. picks or real estate news. So I started a real estate news account mm -hmm. and it was just, there was data on an Inman article that said the majority of agents were voting for Hillary or something like that. So I just posted that and then made some joke about emails and thinking like, this is before I even knew what was going on politically. Really. I was just like, Oh, this is a funny joke. And it's a yeah. stat. I'm combining humor with this Yeah, yeah. pushback on that post was so bad that oh. I was like, okay, that's a topic that I know is just only going to diminish yeah. my audience. Yeah. And not everything is to gain audience. Like if I lose followers because they disagree with something, that's totally fine. But if it's mm -hmm. something that polarizing where you're like either taking a side or you're just like mentioning yeah. something that's that political, then as a brand trying to appeal to these mass, mm -hmm. mass amount of people, it's that's something I knew to not do anymore. Well, and to that point, like your audience has obviously shifted a little bit as you've grown, right? Like right. your, what you're building has shifted. So evolved, if you will. So like you yes. have to sort of be mindful, I guess, of that. Yeah. But okay. now, you know, after this, I'm going to, I'm going to get edgier and go back to the roots. <laughs> like those Canadians. Wow. Hard. Yeah, exactly. I, I know, like. I picked up that you're friends with Matt and some of his stuff is very edgy. So I mean. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I don't like, it's not that edgy. He's. I love Matt. Yeah, um, yeah. Just curse words. Curse words, I don't think oh, are that edgy. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not discrediting his edginess. Like, yeah, definitely yeah. cursing is slightly more edgier, but it's not like Matt's Matt's so good at it. Like, he, mm -hmm. the, the curse words are perfectly timed in the videos. Like, it everything. It seems to just fit his persona. It like, does. It, it seems to just like be really authentic. Like, obviously, I have no idea who he is, but, um, you know what I mean? Like it would be different if it was somebody else and you're like, oh, wow, that doesn't seem to fit. But it seems to just fit like the who he is. Maybe. Yeah. He, no, he's great at it. And he's yeah. he's constantly like I'll have brainstorm sessions with him. Well, he'll send me a video and be like, is this too edgy? Is this on the line? Mm -hmm. And then we'll have conversations back and forth. Like it's all very yeah. like he's very intentional with what he's posting where it's mm -hmm. like, OK, I know this is going to ruffle some feathers. But at the same time, yeah, you know, let's push that comedic line because if you don't do it then stuff just stops becoming funny so he's really good at kind mm -hmm. of pushing that overton window a little bit more and more he's awesome there's this funny um lady i think she's from the states her name's the entitled housewife i haven't seen her <laughs> she now did oh you look her up after she is so your wife actually may find her more funny than you mm -hmm. actually because right. i find her more funny than my husband <laughs> the entitled and, housewife entitled housewife okay. she is so funny and like she just essentially walks around talks to herself and like pretends to yell at her husband right very funny, funny stuff yeah it's good stuff but I'll like she's look. very on brand like i'm sure if i i'm envisioning like maybe if i met her and we were like having a cocktail or something like that's exactly what i was gonna get you know right it's, it feels like authentic exactly <laughs> okay so being mindful of time is there any other like kind of 
cool upcoming projects or things that you're working on besides Bandcamp? Yeah, I think it's really events, digital events. We have that BAM Chell event coming up. We have oh, yeah, three BAM, BAM camps and then we have BAM Mania coming up in October. Oh, tell me about Vegas. BAM Mania. Like, what's that? It's, it's going to be like in Vegas. That's going to be oh, our big wow. conference. So the BAM camps are all these intimate, you know, 100 to 200 people uh, events where you learn an enormous amount. BAM Mania is going to be 500 people with, I don't really know the twist we're going to have yet, but our, at our last <laughs> BAM camp, we had Derek Gregory MC it. So he was telling jokes in between and kind of roasting each speaker, which is like a hilarious twist. So we're kind of figuring yeah. out right. which speakers to put at which event, what BAM Mania is going to look like. Mm -hmm. But we have the dates locked in. And we're locking Sweet. in the venue for that right now. So that's awesome. other than that, it's just constantly evolving, trying to grow the audience, trying yeah. to figure out what shows work, trying to figure out what podcasts do well, which converts, what doesn't, mm -hmm. and just constantly trying to get better every single day. What a I cliche, mean, awful way to end this. <laughs> constantly trying to get better every day. Rewind. But, uh, no, I'm yeah, just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think that's cool. Okay. I'm going to look into BAM meeting. I've never been to Vegas, so. Oh, maybe, nice. Maybe that I think you'll like it. it. I don't know. I mean, well, Vegas I is awesome. I, yeah. I have, um, you know, when you're like younger, there was tons of trips, like lots of bachelorettes, all those things. Yeah. Um, and it just seems like Vegas is like just too wild. Like Nashville is very fun. Scottsdale is very fun. But I hear Vegas is like even more wild. And I'm like, I don't know. It could just be too much for me. Well, you could do Vegas a ton of different ways. It's not like you have to go to Marquee Wait. until 3 a.m. <laughs> clubbing. Like you could you could go to nice restaurants. There's nice hotels. You could gamble a little bit. I'm only out. laughing because do you know how many people have said that? Like, what Like what the hell? Like, you you know that there's more to Vegas than like the pool party. Mm, mm, Correct. Mm. So I was like, no, I, I did not know that. Right. <laughs> I well, just... It is important because you see Vegas, but like there's so many different paths. Like you could walk yeah. in the hotel and be like, I'm going to do something crazy right now. Or you could go up to your room and, you know, whatever you could. There's just so many different ways to go about it. I don't know where All I'm right. going with that. But yeah. I just mean like you're being pulled in different directions. There's a yeah. slot machine calling your name or there's a blackjack table. There's a you club, got options. There's great food. There's a show. Mm -hmm. There's a conference. Do you want to actually go in the conference? Or you just want to stay in the casino, you know, yeah. choose you your adventure. Sports book. Choose your adventure. Exactly. Are you ever going to take BAM camp to Canada? Probably at some point. Yeah. I mean, it seems like there's a lot of Canadians that are like, we have a ton of, you. yeah, I, I love the Canadians. <laughs> I do. I love like, I love like, you know, Matt, the Canadians. Brad, Brad McCollum. I like all those, all those guys and girls. Guys and girls. I don't, do I don't think that you actually had a girl's name in there. Uh, said Matt and Brad. So Emma those... <laughs> Pace, Amy Coughlin. There you go. We have options there. Exactly. Yeah. I think, you, you know, I'm going to make a suggestion. Kristen sells houses. Okay. You know her? No, nope, not at all. Okay. Where is she? Toronto as well? I don't know. Yeah, I'll Google it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just somewhere I, up there. I, you know, Canada's kind of big. It's like the States. It's, I know. I've I've seen it. I know I know what it is. It's kind of big. It's yeah. funny. I, I think I told you I was just in Sedona. And I always start very big when someone's like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Canada. And they're like, cool, where? And I'm like, Alberta, they're like, no idea. It's like, okay, I'm from Canada. <laughs> yeah, to start narrowing it down and then expanding it again. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, okay, this isn't we're not this isn't going anywhere. So we'll just yeah. say Canada. <laughs> well, this was so freaking fun. And I wasn't, I knew I was gonna laugh a lot, but I didn't know how much I was gonna laugh. So thank Good. you Glad very I much. <laughs> I mean, the bar was high, but you delivered. So Good. thank you so much for taking time. I know you're incredibly busy. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye. All right. There. That was it. Nice. Not so bad. That was good. I didn't use any of my questions, actually. Well, good. That means that the conversation <laughs> was flowing. Yeah. Did you ever, have you ever had a, a guest? And uh, I'm going to actually stop recording so I can say this. Um, but I had a guest once and I was just like, I need to